Are you looking for a stress-free summer? HelloFresh sends you foolproof step-by-step -step recipes and fresh pre-portioned ingredients to make mealtimes a summer breeze. Get 16 free meals plus three free gifts with code MLM16 at hellofresh.com MLM16. Now, this may be weird, but I never expected to begin an episode talking about the term rubberhead and stampaholic. When I first found it, I immediately assumed it referred to some sort of offensive slur, but here we are. And no, for the record, it's not in reference to that. Stamping is a creative hobby that is just as straightforward as it sounds. Enthusiasts use stamping materials to make a decorative imprint on a variety of surfaces. There are rubber stamps, clear stamps, and metal stamps, as far as I know, but there could be more. What draws people into this hobby is the versatility of surfaces. Wrapping paper, cakes, and clothing are just some of the canvases for people to express themselves artistically. This activity sprang into popularity around the year 2000, and many companies have capitalized on its market. So there should be no surprise here that it also has an MLM attached to it. Stampin' Up, and yes, with the exclamation points, I have to say it like that apparently, was founded in 1988 by sisters Shelley Gardner and LaVon Crosby. These women were highly involved in a number of direct marketing companies after marrying their husbands and moving to the Las Vegas area. One of them notably was Tupperware. The sisters were introduced to rubber stamping and fell in love with it. Shelly wanted to be a distributor, but the sisters didn't like the sales approach of existing companies. She and LaVon thought, if we can't find the right company, why don't we just make one? Soon they had their business model and Stampin' Up steadily grew. I need to stop doing that. That's gonna sound terrible if I do this the entire episode, but it has an exclamation mark after it. And I just feel like you gotta be a little jazzy with it or something, you know? Well, they opened up a number of distribution centers and became one of the largest stamping outlets out there. LaVon Crosby left the company in 1998 and oddly she's nowhere to be found on the company information. And I find that really weird. Like it's like she never existed unless you dig deep. It doesn't truly have much impact on the topic as far as the MLM quality, but her absence is strange since she was literally one of the founders. Now, when you look at the background, it only says the company was founded by two sisters. And it makes me wonder why there's such a deliberate effort to leave one sister out of the story. The reported version for Crosby leaving the business was to focus on her family. And of course there's nothing wrong with that, but the whole shtick of MLMs is supposedly giving you the flexibility to do both. So I find that just a little odd. Now, Shelly's daughter, Sarah, is now the CEO. The founder stepped down in 2015 to serve in a Mormon mission with her husband. And I know we've gone over the Mormon church and everything before, but it's interesting that followers are part of yet another MLM. Now, fortunately or unfortunately, depending how you wanna look at this, the family being Mormon doesn't actually appear to have any impact on the business itself, which seems to be good. On the surface, it appeared that Stampin' Up, I, I'm sorry, I'm gonna do it the whole time. Stampin' Up had a major impression but in the past 10 years, their representatives have been leaving in droves. Why I left Stampin' Up, I, I tried to contain myself there, but why I left Stampin' Up is the title of many videos and articles. There is a major issue with the company and it's driving away their sellers and bringing up some legal trouble. Hello and welcome to Multi-Level Mondays. I'm the Illuminati and today we're gonna be talking about the Stampin' Up MLM. God help me, this whole episode, I am just gonna be completely unhinged about this. Of course, with it being in direct sales, you know that not everything is rosy and bright. So put yourself in the shoes of one of the MLM sellers for just a moment here. You're browsing the web, looking for potential inspiration for your next designs, and soon you find images that look oddly familiar. They are the same designs that you sell, and they even have your company's name, but they aren't allegedly your product. Well, that's exactly what happened to Stampin' Up! as they sued Alibaba and a number of Alibaba's affiliates. A number of independent sellers were accused of selling knockoff versions of their stamps, listing them in English with US prices and US shipping. Wu Yu, K-L-J-U-Y-P, and if that's how you, if, there's a, if that's a word that you pronounce, I cannot pronounce that. Cool Hul and Liang Shang Mei and a number of others were docked on the ticket. Alibaba was held responsible for not moderating the potential counterfeit. And I think you guys know how I feel about copyright. With technology the way it is, what we create is so ingrained in our ability to provide for ourselves and our loved ones. This is something that pretty much everyone knows, but I think I wanna spell it out anyway. If you take someone's material for your own gain, you are almost literally taking money out of their pocket and food out of their mouth. It's such a rampant issue due to, in part, the fact that creativity itself is so highly marketable and is so easily accessible. 
but put a pin on this bit of information because we will return to it later on. Now, this lawsuit against Alibaba is indirectly involved with why Stampin' Up! has so many consultants quitting their jobs. There are a number of YouTube pages, blogs, Reddit threads, tweets, and more talking about the state of the company, why they are leaving, and what's next for them in their stamping careers. I normally don't use a lot of these smaller sources because they don't typically get vetted for reliability, but I do find that they are important here. Now, what I found in them are recurring themes, enough that little drops of evidence result in a sweeping river. One of the primary reasons that many have left the company has actually little to do with the company itself. Crap happens, life happens, right? Whether there's an unexpected move or a passing in the family, there are times when we all have to put the business aside and tend to what's really important in life. A number of former stampers share their personal story and how they felt like leaving was the best decision. I listened to a number of these women's stories and something just kept bugging me about it. There is never a point where I read or hear, Stampin' Up! has been really supportive through my ordeal. And look, I understand that companies don't really have an obligation to help their people through hardships or situations, barring things like maternity leave and medical stuff, but it's still widely considered an expectation. I would say that counts for this MLM especially, considering that their past webpage claimed, Shelly and her sister envisioned the company working much like a family where each demonstrator could participate at whatever level worked best for her personal circumstance. Families are generally expected to lend a hand or word of support if there are hardships. I find this omission of the company's role in those hardships really odd. What assumption can be made other than the probability of the company adding on stress? Their current claim is that their desire to make a positive difference in people's lives is like, that's what they're working with right now. In almost every case though, they're a glaring no-show for the ones who left. Just like most other MLMs, Stampin' Up! largely markets to women. The majority of the website features pictures of women. And while men also enjoy hobbies like stamping and women are equally capable of excelling in you know, other non-stamping careers, they still appear to operate under the stereotype of stay-at-home moms looking to make money. Stampin' Up! per the norm gives the facade of empowering women when it does the opposite. It's all the more reason to call them out on their lack of presence when times are tough. Like other reasons sellers are leaving, it's directly attributed to the MLM policies. Like I said before, Stampin' Up! is extremely protective of their material and I fully understand why. However, it's taken too far when it comes to policies directed at their sellers. It's not like sellers are trying to copy their products like what Alibaba did. A scrapbooking blog reported in September of 2009 that Stampin' Up! updated their no compete clause. And again, there's initially no problem with a non-compete. Especially in a creative outlet, it does make some sense. There are just two rules, however, that are literally driving their own sellers away. I'm taking these rules directly from that policy booklet. Representatives may not sell any competitive products or services as listed above through electronic communications, including email, social networks, blogs, or websites. The next one is also a restriction. They can't participate in affiliate programs or be compensated for affiliate links to competitive products, competitive categories of products, or competitive companies on blogs, videos, social media, or other online forums. Demonstrators also may not monetize their personal sites or Stampin' Up! sales through affiliate programs. Now, I want to stress these two rules because they are deeply involved with the sellers. If they have a website, they can only sell Stampin' Up! products, and they're playing watchdog over your electronic communications and a website if you have one. From what I've seen, there are a lot of sources for stamping and people are naturally creative folks. They want to mix and match products. They want to experiment and express themselves. This MLM actively prevents their sellers from being the artistic force they are by saying, you can only use this product brand. These rules and all others listed also apply to spouses, whether or not they work for Stampin' Up. So if you have a husband or wife who wants to work with another stamping company, too damn bad. All competitive activities, guidelines, and exclusions apply to both a demonstrator and their spouse, regardless of whether or not the spouse is a supporting demonstrator. Regardless of if you're the only seller, they are just as much employed as you are. And to that note, it's a bit of a slap in the face to the whole self-empowerment idea they try to sell. You know, the whole own your own business and be your own boss rhetoric. These sellers are supposed to be their own professional entity. They should have the right to feature whatever items they want, if that's accurately what's going on here. Now, I do understand some of their rules. I don't expect them to accept other items being sold at their events, but you know, what someone wants to do in their own time is like their own business, especially if you aren't paying them. And I have never ever seen a rule where it extends to your spouse. I don't even know if that is like something that can be held up legally. It's 
It's so incredibly strange. I've never seen something like this before. But of course, these are supposed to be business owners. And, you know, I'm no, you know, little smarty pants here, but um, I thought part of a business owner thing is having autonomy over your own business, not having someone above you control you and control your spouse's creative activities, but okay. The severe no compete types of rules are stifling as well. And it's other primary reasons why people leave this MLM. It would be one thing if the stamps and accessories were exceptional, but it's been reported this year that many reps are even disappointed with the selection. Personally, I don't have a lot of experience with stamping, so I couldn't give you a professional opinion regarding the quality of their stamps or a judgment of the art. I can only make conclusions based on those who have the experience with them. So let's go ahead and take a look at that MLM model and see, are these limitations worth it to get in the circle? Pro tip, they aren't. Let's assume for some reason, the idea of stamping and crafting really inspired someone and they wanted to get into it. They spent a fun night making fun items with friends. They joined the family and get hit with one hell of an entry fee, $99. Now, of course, they're gonna get the typical pitch. Oh, you are getting so much more value than $99. It's really a steal. And when they say it's a steal, you have to always wonder who's actually doing the stealing. One of the claims they make is that they're giving you all the things you need to run your own business. But we just uncovered the fact that it isn't really their business and especially not with all of those rules and clauses attached. It doesn't seem like much, but keep in mind that most of the sales reps and MLMs don't make enough money to support themselves. We've gone over it at nauseum, but just so you know that this one is not unique. Chances are that the $99 for the investment won't be recouped, just statistically speaking. Now, that being said, the entry cost isn't what gets them roped in. It's the cost of maintaining the status. In order to stay with the MLM, a seller has to earn 300 CSV or consumer sales value, which is honestly an unnecessarily fancy way to say $300. If a person doesn't make their sales in a month, they are put on probation where they either have to earn that money or get kicked out. Now keep in mind that some of these demonstrators are depending on that income. And again, this initially doesn't seem too perilous, but then a seller has to count in all the expenses involved with setting up a show. There's the cost of renting a venue if said seller needs a place to do the show. They also have to pay the price for advertising online, run and maintain their own website, pay for all the classes and products to use the business, all the stationery and pay for gas, which honestly is probably insane now. And these are just the basic costs of running your own business in this capacity. So it isn't really that unfamiliar. Chances are, you know a business owner who deals with these types of things. But the main difference is that they may have a legitimate autonomy over all of their stuff. And you stack all these expenses together and then you'll make the bare minimum wage on sales. And voila, we have the MLM model. Realistically speaking, if someone wants to stay out of the red as a Stampin' Up! owner, they would need to make anywhere between 600 to 800 dollars. Now they'll tell you, of course, that you can make that easily, but by now we know again that the numbers don't lie and the numbers do not agree with that statement. Like the majority of other MLMs, Stampin' Up! got in trouble with the FTC regarding bogus claims made during the pandemic. They received the same cease and desist order as all the rest. One of the income claims that was shot down highlighted an accomplishment made by one of their sellers who brought in over a million dollars. Now the other one was a bit more deceitful. A seller reached out to her friends talking about how to get them something for free would result in her getting her car paid off. Another encouraged people to sign up because it was a cheap and easy business investment. And I feel like I have to say this every time because it just keeps coming up. Trying to thrive and make a living off an MLM job is not easy and it certainly isn't quick cash. The chances of succeeding in this type of business is astronomically low. And there are people out there who will try to convince you otherwise, but you always have to be on guard with these things. And you know, most of the time they make these claims because they want you to join and become their downline. It's always about money. The company doesn't require their reps to recruit, but there's always the lure of earning more. There are always going to be people out there who are willing to sell you or your loved ones out for some extra cash. There was a reason I always stress that people put their relationships at risk when joining an MLM. By now, people have figured out when they're getting used or being seen as just another dollar in someone else's wallet or purse. It breaks their trust and calls their friendship into question. And you better believe that there is an upline downline hierarchy here. There's a bronze, bronze elite, silver, silver elite, gold, gold elite, platinum, and platinum elite. And you can tell we're really just pushing the edge of creativity here with these names. 
Now, the more demonstrators or sellers you have under your belt, the higher the ranking is, not to mention the more that has to be sold. There is even the annual incentive program, which is a trip to Alaska with hundreds of other demonstrators. The person who blogs about the trip gushes about how much they enjoyed it, but there's no claim of them paying for the flight or the cruise. It would not surprise me at all if the cruise was just another training program meant to indoctrinate the sellers even more. For MLMs as a whole, I don't understand the idea of squeezing every penny out of the people around you. With all these expenses listed, you can absolutely work nonstop around the clock and maybe make a vision come true. But more often than not, it's going to be vital for a demonstrator to recruit as many bodies as possible. They of course will get a chunk out of the pie and quite a bit towards their quota. And this goes into one of the other reasons that demonstrators are leaving. They're simply getting burned out from the intense grind that Stampin' Up! created through their requirements. There is a lot of pressure to make sales. And as one former demonstrator said, there is no stop to the grind. The very moment that circumstances get difficult, this MLM becomes overwhelming. It's hard to imagine owning your own business, having all sorts of expenses, having all that stress and lacking true agency in what you do. Stampin' Up! stifles the very thing that it prioritizes as a company, creativity. What's even more frustrating is the possibility that for all the rules this MLM pushes, they may not practice what they preach. And before we get into that frustrating reality, let's take a quick moment to thank today's sponsors. Those big wireless providers forget that families come in all shapes and sizes. That's why Mint Mobile decided to shake up the wireless industry with their brand new modern family plan. Each line starts at just 15 bucks a month and you only need two lines to get started. And this is really awesome because I did this for all of my company phones for everyone who has like a business cell phone. We all have Mint Mobile plans for all of our work phones and we're just all under one family. So it's really easy for me to take care of everyone's bill every single month because we're all under one little family unit now. And truthfully for anyone who hates their cell phone bill, Mint Mobile offers wireless service for just 15 bucks a month. And they're gonna give you the best rate whether you're buying for one or for a family. And at Mint, again, family started just two lines. And all those plans are gonna come with unlimited talk and text and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. And you can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. So to get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, including the modern family plan, make sure you go to mintmobile.com MLM. That's mintmobile.com MLM. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com MLM. Now saying goodbye to high interest credit card debt is one of the first steps towards financial independence but the interest month after month after month after month can feel like you're in a never ending hamster wheel. And that's where Upstart comes in. Upstart powered personal loans can help you pay down high interest debt all online with simple and easy to understand payment terms. Upstart has helped over 1.8 million customers on their path to financial freedom. And Upstart knows that you're more than just your credit score. So rather than looking at your credit score alone, Upstart's model considers other factors like your income, employment, and other information provided in your loan application to help you find a smarter rate for your project. You can check your rate in minutes for loans between $1,000 to $50,000 without impacting your credit score. So it doesn't matter if you're trying to pay off high interest credit cards, consolidate debt, or fund a personal expense, Upstart can get you one fixed monthly payment with a clear payoff date. So don't wait and check your rate today at upstart.com slash MLM. That's upstart.com slash MLM to check your rate today. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash MLM. We've talked about how Stampin' Up! had a standing lawsuit against Alibaba for alleged copyright infringement or counterfeiting, depending on how you wanna see it. Now that began in 2018. The following year in 2019, the MLM was actually on the receiving end of a lawsuit from a company called My Sweet Petunia. My Sweet Petunia founded three patents codenamed 531, 812, and 875 respectively. Each trademark was legally issued by the United States Patent and Trademark Office with corresponding dates listed. Points 12 through 14 go into detail about each one of the patents, pointing out specific details about the intellectual properties. The individual patent list of rubber stamps with specific grid lines, workspace, a specific number of magnets, and a certain number of measurements that set them apart from others were all details that were listed and important details to note. The stamps also have a number of accessories specific to each product. This was allegedly to make the stamping process more steady and consistent. My Sweet Petunia makes the accusation essentially that Stampin' Up! copied the patent and created their own product, the Stamparatus, which what a name. 
On November 14th, 2017, Petunia sent Stampin' Up! a cease and desist letter, the first cease and desist letter informing Stampin' Up! of the 531 patent and requesting that Stampin' Up! provide Petunia a sample of the Stamparatus. The following month, the MLM responded, denying any trademark infringement and refusing to send a sample. It's clear that the company believes that Stampin' Up! knowingly violated their legal rights. What strikes me as a bit strange here is the repeated refusal to cooperate with My Sweet Petunia in any fashion whatsoever. If the items were so different, wouldn't it just be easy to send over a sample of the Stamparatus and be like, look, they're not the same at all? There are already trademarks involved on both sides. So if My Sweet Petunia by chance were suspected of stealing the trademark, Stampin' Up! could simply turn around the lawsuit and financially hit the plaintiff even harder. Now it could be for all the stress they put on protecting their trademark that Stampin' Up! actually does have something to hide. Could this be a company that really doesn't care about artistic integrity like they claim? Now, if that were the case, this MLM would be exposed as true hypocrites that only care about getting as much money as possible. And I'm not saying they are or not, I'm just saying this is kind of shady. It's definitely a gray area. And the fact that they kind of just were like, no, we're not participating in this lawsuit is weird. And I mean, yeah, they're an MLM. There's a certain reputation already there and the reputation's not a good one. When it comes to the litigations that are ongoing, there are a lot of questions, but sadly, not really a lot of answers yet. So we are still waiting and watching. Now, the truth here is people are leaving, lawsuits are ongoing, and the overall perception of Stampin' Up! has been in great decline. I truly feel for those who bought into the system and got repeatedly punished for wanting to explore all aspects of their creativity, because those are the people that really suffer here at the end of the day. When looking at this MLM and all the details demonstrators are forced through, it's shocking that anyone would humor them with their time, but That was apparently a thing for a while. It feels like what keeps them going is the promise of people who feel restrained, who want to create artistic outlets and express themselves. And it seems like stamping is a legitimately fun way to express themselves and and just have a good time. I've actually seen some cool crafts and learned about how versatile stamping actually is by researching this and I was just surprised. I didn't know you could even do this much. Like that's very cool. But as always, I want to stress caution when involving yourself with an MLM. MLMs in general have a track record and it's a bit consistent in the shitty department. So just know that it doesn't really matter what genre of activity this MLM is being involved in, whether it be stamps or supplements or whatever, they usually are not as great as they seem initially. And this is another case of that. In the meantime though, if you are someone who enjoys stamping, then keep on at it. Make holiday cards and wrapping paper, design something cool on a shirt or press a beautiful piece of nature to color. These are worthwhile things to do. If not for profit, at least then just for yourself, enjoy the work that you create. It's a shame that companies out there would and do take advantage of that. For financial freedom, for creative freedom, I'd recommend you avoid Stampin' Up. But hey, what do I know? I'm just a pyramid here on the internet. So those are just opinions, thoughts, and everything all wrapped up into a cute little bow of what is currently the state of Stampin' Up. That will be the end of today's episode. I do hope you learned something new here today. And if you did, make sure that you're liking, following, and subscribing so you can stay up to date on all the latest episodes. And if you're listening to us over on YouTube, make sure that when you are subscribing, you're hitting that notification bell so you can be notified every time there's a new episode. I appreciate your time here with me today and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. 